and welcome to Rising. We have a fantastic show planned for you today, and I'm joined this Friday by the lovely Jessica Burbank. Great to be back with you, Jessica. We're back again. Jesus rose on the third day, but we rise every Friday. <laughs> I love that. Well, we're going to have, um, unfortunately, some tragic new developments in the missing Titanic tour submersible. Yesterday afternoon, officials confirmed the debris field found on the seafloor near the Titanic wreck indicate Ocean Gate's Titan sub suffered a, quote, catastrophic failure in the vessel's pressure chamber. Ocean Gate released a statement confirming all five passengers aboard Titan are presumed dead. Now, shortly after confirmation of the sub's demise broke yesterday, the Wall Street Journal reported that a top secret U.S. Navy sonar in the North Atlantic detected a noise consistent with an underwater implosion just hours after the vessel went missing on Sunday. This new revelation has prompted criticism over the search and rescue effort launched by the U.S. and Canadian militaries. Reporter Paul McLeod tweeted, quote, if this is right, then the sub imploded within hours. The U.S. Navy knew it right away. We've spent days marshalling vessels and spending millions on a pointless rescue mission while they said nothing because it's a secret system. Then the secret leaked. So this is uh, some really shocking news that we would have spent millions to search for five folks who likely died instantly, and, and they knew that that was likely the case given that this implosion happened just after they lost contact with the submersible. I think a lot of folks are, are quite disappointed with the response, and many people are, are just outraged that there were five people who paid a quarter million dollars to go on this submersible. When the CEO, Stockton Rush, had complained about regulations in the industry, calling them things like like they're absurd, saying all sorts of things that, that the regulations were not necessary and were unnecessarily restrictive. And now we're in this situation. I think there's an opportunity cost here uh, as to where those millions of dollars could have gone. There are plenty of people in the United States that die preventable deaths because they don't have the resources to pay for health care. And the fact that millions were allocated towards a rescue mission when likely all five people who were on board this submersible had already passed. That's what's really striking for me when it comes to this story and how it's ending here. Yeah, I didn't oppose the rescue mission when there was a reasonable and conceivable idea that they would potentially still be alive when they found the submersible. But the fact that the Navy knew that this had supposedly combusted days ago and didn't say anything, even if they had just given the rescue team a heads up, like, hey, Coast Guard, we got word. Can't tell you how, but we know that the sub has has exploded or combusted. That would be actually really great. Obviously, they didn't do that. And there's tons of conspiracy theories swirling around about why they didn't do that. Um, but otherwise, I don't have a problem with rich people spending their money on dumb stuff. I think the vast majority of advancement throughout society has been because of rich people spending their money on dumb stuff. And I'm never going to begrudge someone for having an adventurous spirit. I have no problem with that. And I think a lot of the criticism of rich people wanting to spend their money, which $250,000 for a rich person is obviously small potatoes, on this expedition is a little bit of jealousy. For me, it's more about uh, when you have billionaires, which we did on the submersible and people with hundreds of millions of dollars, those dollars represent real productive capacity and things of value in our economy. That's how you know currency works in our society. And so when you have people hoarding billions of dollars of wealth, those dollars represent real things. They are hoarding resources. And so it's a direct consequence of people like the wealthy folks on that submersible that others don't have the resources that they need to meet basic material needs. And that's just poor management of our currency, poor management of the monetary system. And I understand that many people say, well, we have to treat everybody as human beings. We can't make jokes about the folks on the submarine just because they are rich and they've ran our economy in exploitative ways at the consequence of others. They're human beings as well. We should have empathy for them. Let's take that sentiment 10 steps further and say, what about the refugees that died off of the coast of Greece? Uh, dozens are dead, hundreds are missing because they were trying to take a, a boat across the Mediterranean Sea. Let's also take that same logic and sentiment and think about the hundreds of thousands of preventable deaths we have 
Uh, we have 45,000 people dying every year in the United States because of lack of health care coverage. I think when we see the amount of material resources that go to waste, uh, that we have the capacity to produce enough as an economy to make sure everybody is fed and everybody has health care, but we have an allocation problem, I think we should bring that same outrage and take that same exact logical argument 10, 10 steps further and really think about the consequences of having people with this much excess wealth. I just don't accept the premise that because you're wealthy, you've uh, you've necessarily exploited other people or been greedy. Um, I don't think that's the case at all. And there was a 19-year-old on this boat with his father who, I mean, is still in the early stages of his life. He's not some uh, guy who has spent his life stepping on other people's heads, becoming a billionaire by exploiting the system or what have you. He's someone who is trying to give his dad a nice Father's Day gift. So I do have compassion for these people. Would I have gotten on the submersible? No, um, definitely not. I think it's kind of a guy thing, to be honest with you kind of doing stupid stuff for the adventure, um, especially considering a lot of the warning signs that were involved in this submersible. But again, I don't begrudge people for taking that risk. I mean, for example, I would have the same level of compassion for a middle class person who went out on a kayak in the middle of a lightning storm. I would think that what they did was stupid, but I would still feel bad for them and I would want the Coast Guard to try to rescue them. Yeah, when I think about the the 19 year old, I think that's a similar situation, right? He he didn't have much agency. He his father decided that this is something he wanted to do, and the kid said, you know, Father's Day is around the corner. I'm just gonna I'm gonna go with him, uh, out of respect for him, even though I'm terribly afraid. I think there are a lot of children in the United States that are just born to working class families who are not paid a living wage by the folks they work for. And those corporations are making billions of dollars in profit. That's inherently exploitative. When you're making people so that they have to struggle to pay rent and rely on food stamps while still working over 40 hours a week, and the corporation's making a, a ton of money off of your labor. No one accumulates a billion dollars without exploiting others. There's just no way it can possibly happen, that amount of money. And so when I think about this situation, yeah, of course, I, I feel bad for, for anyone who has to suffer, anyone who has to die. And I think the sentiment needs to be taken further that if we, we care about suffering and if we, we care about preventable deaths, then we should also care about those that happen every single day, not just in unique circumstances like this. I think it's very fitting that uh, this was called Ocean Gate uh, because it's turned into like Pizza Gate or Watergate or any of the other gates we like to tack on to the end of controversies. But I, I think it's it's become a moment where people are really learning from it and learning about how resources are spent in the world. And I think the wealthy are learning about how fed up working class people are with the excess wealth and how it's used and how that happens. I guess there should be a question of how much money a rich person is allowed to spend on vacation before somebody deems it too much. Um, but to your point about Oceangate, there's some speculation online, mainly by those on the right, that the submersible search was a distraction by the Biden administration to turn attention away from the Hunter Biden probe, which we will, of course, cover extensively later in the show. What do you think about that, Jessica? Um, I don't think that there's that much uh, manufactured consent there. I think that there's uh, going to be coverage of the Hunter Biden investigation no matter what. I don't think the media loves Hunter Biden as, as much as many conservatives think they do. I don't think it's, it's that much of a protection there. I do believe the establishment certainly will we'll do things to protect candidates like Biden and the establishment candidates. But I also think they had a vested interest in making this story a big deal so that we could have this conversation where they say, oh my gosh, it would be absurd for you to not have compassion for these people, even though they're very rich. We're seeing a lot of pieces hit the press right now about how inhuman it is to make jokes about something like this. And that just doesn't land the same way when you have these same legacy media companies saying that it is necessary that we keep a group of the population unemployed for the economy to function well, and that suffering is necessary and that people need private health insurance. And that's why we should have these preventable deaths all of the time of illnesses that are curable that people can't get health care for because they don't have insurance because of how our private insurance industry works. And so I I just I I don't think it's about Hunter Biden. I think it's a part of a larger narrative of manufacturing consent, but not specifically a distraction from Hunter Biden. 
Meanwhile, Titanic director and experienced sea venturer James Cameron weighed in on the tragedy. Let's watch. Ocean Gate shouldn't have been doing what it was doing. I think that's pretty clear. I wish I had been more vocal about that, but I think I was unaware that they weren't certified uh, because I wasn't really studying it. I wasn't really interested. Stockton Rush asked me if I wanted to go out there and dive this season. You know, I wasn't interested. There was a lot of concern about this outfit and this sub. A lot of concern, even to the extent that I wasn't involved in it because I was making Avatar 2 at the time, but a lot of them got together and wrote a letter to, uh, to Ocean Gate and said, you have to certify. You cannot take people down. It's irresponsible. And it could lead to catastrophe. Monday morning when I first found out about the incident, got on a whole bunch of calls and emails. It's a small community. Within an hour and a half, I had the following information. They were on descent. They were at 3,500 feet. They lost comms and tracking. The last one being the critical one because the, the transponder that's used to track a sub it, during descent and on the bottom is a fully autonomous system. It's in its own pressure housing and it has its own battery power. So for them to lose comms and tracking at the same time, sub was gone. There was no question in my mind. I have to say that uh, I guess there's some comfort or, or positive that these people ended up dying a quick death rather than the alternative, which was that this submersible was underwater floating around and slowly they ran out of oxygen and suffocated to death. Um, that obviously would have been horrifying and I cannot imagine dying that way. Yeah, I also can't imagine why the U.S. Navy wouldn't release that information right away either. Perhaps they were confirming it wasn't some other vessel that imploded and didn't want to report on it and then have Ocean Gate be found later. And now they've reported on some other vessel that exploded near the Titanic or imploded rather. But it does sound like when all of us were wondering if they were running out of oxygen and struggling with hypothermia, facing a really slow death that actually, no, they died quite instantly if this submersible exploded. I think also Stockton Rush having so many people around him warning him about the dangerous nature of taking people this far down in this submersible it is just showing the, the lack of empathy there on his part because he called the regulations in the industry obscenely safe. Doesn't sound like that was really the case. For someone to advocate against safety regulations is something we've seen a lot from CEOs of America's biggest corporations. We're just getting reporting out of East Palestine that uh, the rail cars were blown up because it was more convenient uh, for the rail industry rather than a consideration of the public safety of the people living in the area. They always lobby against regulations in the direction of them doing things more cheaply at the consequence of their workers and at the consequence of consumers and, and people who live nearby and have to endure those negative externalities. So yeah, Stockton Rush will, will never face the consequences for his actions there. And so hopefully everyone else will, will learn from what it means to lobby against safety regulations and that they're there uh, for good reason in the first place. It does sound like if there was any villain per se in this case, it was Stockton considering he ignored all of the warning signs about the potential safety uh, downfalls or drawbacks of this particular submersible. I also wanted to mention the sort of weirdness about, I believe it was a son-in-law of one of the passengers who was on the submersible who um, went to a Blink-182 concert in the midst of the rescue effort and said that he was justifying it because his parents would want him to go to the Blink-182 concert while they were lost at sea, and then promptly, I think, had to delete his social media account after he tweeted the N-word. Um, so kind of a weird saga there. Yeah, I think that sounds to me like a, a typical story of you know, super rich kids with parents that might not be fully present. They might not have a terribly close relationship. I know if my parents were in a life or death situation, I would not be able to do anything but worry about them. And so that just signals to me that perhaps they weren't very close. And tweeting the N word, I think I saw uh, they commented on an OnlyFans creator account as well. People were really putting a lot of public pressure on this guy when 
I I don't think it's a, a part of the story really at all, other than we can learn from the human experience of, you know, the, the disconnect that a lot of rich parents who, who don't want to be a part of their kids' lives or don't have the time to because they're working, they end up not having a very strong relationship and they do things like go to Blink-182 concerts when their parents are facing, you know, looming death. Yeah, that is a really sad thing. Um, overall, again, I, I, I feel so... Um, drawn, I think, to the idea of an entrepreneurial and exploratory spirit. Um, obviously, in this case, it didn't work out for these people. And especially in the Titanic case, so many people have been down to see it at this point. I'm not sure what additional information they were hoping to glean. But I'm reminded of the story of Magellan's exploration and circumnavigation of the globe, where he started with five ships and 270 men and ended up with just one ship and 18 men. And he himself lost his life in that exploration. So. I hope that we continue to foster adventure and not lash out at it, but we'll be back with more Rising after this.